you know, all things being considered, I would be okay with Ethan Hawke being my therapist. Hello Interwebs, I hope you are all doing well because I am here to review the latest episode of Moon Knight, this time episode 4, The Tomb. Kind of a kind of a straightforward title there, they don't, they're not doing anything fancy smancy, just like, nope, there's a tomb, we're calling it the tomb, it's gonna be a thing. But it does make for a fairly straightforward episode, but what I did enjoy about this is since we don't have Khonshu involved anymore, sort of like complicating the factors, we actually don't even have the character even having superpowers, this was a more straightforward episode at getting at the relationship between not only Mark and Steven, but also Layla. Layla's kind of been on the back burner for most of the season so far, she's gotten some things here and there, but her relationship with both Mark and Steven does come to the fore, and I thought that this was a good moment to really delve into it, and I liked a lot of what we were given. And then on top of that, Ethan Hawke just continues to be the standout presence of the show. Like the few scenes, he doesn't have a ton of scenes here, but the few scenes he does get are actually really amazing. Again, he gives that like calm, collected, like self-assured and smug attitude that I think really just makes him a true joy whenever he's on screen. But getting into some of the specifics, I did really like that Layla saves Steven's life at the beginning of the episode. I thought that was a good little sequence. And it didn't necessarily fix my problem that I had last episode where Layla got saved by Mark, even though she was sort of set up to save his life. But I did at least appreciate several times throughout this episode that Layla can obviously take care of herself. I, I, I did really appreciate this episode going out of its way to show that, considering I was a little bit disappointed with that last episode. And then again, as I sort of said earlier, I like the sort of discussion that we get between Steven, Mark, and Layla throughout all of this. I like Layla having very obviously confused feelings over Steven's personality and presence. Clearly she, I don't want to say is more attracted to him, but it definitely finds his difference to Mark and that he is radically honest with her and kind of endearingly sweet and kind as he just constantly is does draw her attraction and yet she's also both attracted to him because he looks like Mark the person that she fell in love with and yet also distanced from him as well because she isn't the person that she fell in love with he is a different person even though he looks the same smells the same and all that sort of stuff it is literally one in the morning and there's like some loud thing going on outside my window so apologies on that Anywho, but yes, I do really appreciate it. and the actor portrays it well, her conflicted attitude, like when she goes in for a kiss and then Steven pulls away because he's uncomfortable with it, but then he goes for the kiss and you can see that she's now uncomfortable with it. It was just, it was a very well played dynamic that I thought the actors just pulled off really well. How many times can I say really well? I also like the banter between Mark and Steven throughout all of this and the fact that like Mark punches Steven with his own hand after he kisses Layla, that was really good. But then we get into the actual tomb itself and I like that we get a little bit more exposition about Layla's father and how he was sort of always excited and sort of an archeologist on a mission and Steven sort of getting to know her through that and obviously setting us up for what's gonna happen down the road and giving us a little bit of exposition about his uh, backstory, at least Layla's father's backstory but I also at least appreciated that it came out of Steven's genuine interest in learning more about her. But then on top of that, I also appreciated, again, Steven's knowledge of the situation, just earnest excitement at being in the tomb, uh, just being infectious, but then also being useful at the same time where they're able to like figure out that the tomb is actually the, the giant symbol that they're walking around. I thought that was actually a really clever, good use of Steven just not being the tag along character, but actually being proactively useful. I just, I thought that was good. But then we get our first action scene of the episode where they're trying to figure out uh, how to continue into the tomb. And I love Steven being like, maybe we don't like go down the path with the blood and like guts on the floor. That probably is a bad idea. What the hell is outside my window? It's literally one in the morning. There's like a car thing that's going up and down the street and being extremely loud, apologies. That's so weird, like literally it's not a problem until I need to record at one in the morning and, and then there's an issue. I do like the action sequence though when they get this like zombie mummy thing. That was very cool. I love the like echolocation clicking noises, very like Last of Us-y. And I liked how it was filmed out of focus for a few different beats. I always I always appreciate that sort of tact with things when things are like in sight but out of focus. It wasn't as creepy as I've seen that sort of style being done before in like other horror movies. But I understand that this is a Disney plus Marvel show so it's not gonna be like 
absolutely horrifying, scary, but I, I at least appreciate the style being used. It was generally effective, if not the most effective version of it that I've seen. And the makeup looked very cool. And again, I like Layla being able to take care of herself. But then I like that now they're split up, that Harrow uh, sort of confronts Layla. And I like, again, he does have that condescending, calm attitude that she calls him out on. But I like that he just is able to worm his way right into her soft spot, right with her father, and sort of figure out exactly what uh, would sort of get at her and dig get under her skin. But I also appreciate that he leads her to that conclusion. He gets her to say it, what she already kind of assumed and knew. And he knows that that is a much more powerful way to do it instead of him just telling her that she draws it out of her. That was also a nice, like, psychological manipulation tact, uh, tactic on Hera's part that I thought was, uh, again, showcasing how much I really enjoy Ethan Hawke's character throughout this. But then we do get to my one major frustration with the episode as a whole is that like she goes and confronts Mark right now in the tomb of Alexander the Great, which by the way, getting to pull your hand down Alexander the Great's mouth and we learning that this was Alexander the Great, all of that was a lot of fun. But again, I just hate this sort of trope where the characters argue when they know they shouldn't. It's like, Mark had the right of it. Like, we can argue about this later, not right now, when we're literally on the run for our lives. It's just, it's a frustrating trope that I see again and again and again, and I, I, I just want it to die. I just never want to see it again. Um, but unfortunately, it does lead to Harrow getting to uh, attack them, and then Mark and Steven do get shot, and I was actually really surprised by that. I was like, oh damn, I... I was not, uh, not seeing that coming. But then we get a fun little sequence where we get to see an old serial adventure movie, kind of the things that were inspiration for Indiana Jones, that sort of stuff. Uh, and that's, then we get taken out into like a mental hospital, uh, thing that, uh, is like probably a representation of the mind or something like that. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, so I'm curious to see where they're going with this. Maybe some sort of Egyptian mythology sort of thing, uh, that I'm unaware of. But what I do appreciate a few things with this mental hospital for is number one, the sets were gorgeous, especially Harrow's office. Like when we go into his office, the mental hospital, and it's like half Egyptian, half office. That was really cool. Like the set design was amazing and spot on throughout all of this. But what I also appreciated that it didn't spend a lot of time sort of trying to gaslight our character into thinking like, oh, it was all in your head. Cause I've seen storylines like this done before where we spend an entire episode with the character going like, oh, maybe it was all in my head. Maybe I did I'll make it up. Oh man. And we know that that's not going to be the case because we've been watching the show and if the show just hadn't been happening, it would have been, it would have just cheapened the entire thing and a lot of the fun for us. It would have just ruined all the stakes that we've been watching so far. So we know that that's not going to happen. And I like that the episode really didn't spend any time in that. Like Mark at no point really believes that this is the case. And he just starts, once he starts getting his head above water when he's not sedated in Harrow's office, he's like, oh, I need to get the hell out of here. And I just, I just appreciate that it didn't spend a lot of time on it. But what it does lead us to get to, which I thought is a really cool thing to finally allow us to have, was Mark and Steven getting to actually meet each other and get to exist in the same room. Instead of like bouncing off of each other in mirrors and reflections, now they get to actually act off of each other. And Oscar Isaac's obviously doing a great job uh, in, in the dual role, but I just I like it now that they get to act off of each other instead of just in little reflections and moments. Like I think that that's a good progression of their relationship and I'm excited to see where it's going to go. But then we also get the hint of the third personality that we saw hinted at last episode that's much more aggressive because you see the sarcophagi that uh, presumably the third personality is also inside of. So we'll see if that gets unleashed next episode, very clearly alluding to that. But then we end the episode with both of our characters running into this like hippo Egyptian looking thing uh, that uh, looks adorable because it just says hi and it's very cute. And so I'm, I'm here for the cute, adorable hippo friend uh, that just is now in Marvel apparently. Like whatever that is, I'm here for it. Looks great. I, I'm excited for next episode. So overall, uh, a fairly straightforward episode on the whole and a couple frustrations here and there. But generally I, I had a lot of fun with this one. It was another good, uh, good 45 minutes of Marvel television. So I'd love to hear all your thoughts down in the comments below. But beyond all of that, thank you so much for watching my friends. I will see you for my Star Trek and Halo reviews on Thursday, but beyond all of that, I hope that you, as always, live long and prosper.